Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I wanted to compare flat pay slugs against rebated bow tail slugs. In the wind, at long range, uh, 233 meters, actually 232, that's 253.7 yards, I wanted to see how they compare horizontally and vertically. I was not holding off for wind at all, just aiming at the same spot, shooting 10 shots of each. I think the second round I shot six shots of each. And so I also include uh, some footage of pellets that I've shot at that range. It's JSP Beast 33.956, basically 34 grain, but they just can't hold up at that long distance. 254 yards. Um, I think out of 20 I maybe got, I know, four on the gong. Um, and it's a very large gong. Um, so, but um, I can tune these beasts for 25 meters to shoot winning competition, winning groups. If I uh, tune them slower, that's in a 1 in 14 or the 1 in 16 inch twist barrel. Um, they perform very well short, long distance in that wind. It's not a match for these slugs at all. Okay, the rifle I've been using was my FX Impact Mark III with the Leica PRS scope, the PRB reticle, the one at the bottom there. Uh, that specific liner, that uh, barrel is a, a shortened 800mm uh, superior heavy, 1 in 14 twist. I shortened it to 700mm you know, from the barrel side, or rather the chamber side made sure the slug going smoothly there. Um, it doesn't affect the grouping, you only lose about well, 20 to 50 feet per second, depending on sitting depth. Uh, it does not group, uh, affect grouping at all. Of course settings, uh, macro wheel 10 and the valve um, completely turned out, basically well, I, I removed that spring in there I remove it completely. I just make sure not to to pull that trigger, to cock and pull that trigger when there's no A, A in, in the system. Otherwise you will damage your internal parts. Okay, 232. Okay, so this is the setup basically in the sun. That's 25. There's the 300. Anyways. I shot. RVT. 40 grain. Rebated boat tail. 0.17. Of course they will be 25 meters it will still be a little bit unstable the further it gets out the more stable the bullet gets so I'm not going to be shooting competitions with RBTs or rather use beasts JSB beasts at 25 one -oh. but I'll definitely not use beasts as 233 One, two, three, four. So 
some padded at around about 250. Mm, this gauge is a little bit out, it's around about 240. Tether 240 bar. Regulate the pressure at this stage. One. 179.2 But as I said uh, So close Okay, Zane, 40 grain, 217 flat base, 233 meter. Okay. I'm not waiting for wind or anything, just aiming. Same spot, so some of these might be released with a different wind. Okay, I think what we should do is maybe not shoot five, let's shoot ten. Should be a better test. That's four. Four on. Not great, I'm not compensating for wind at all. I just want to kind of like see. That's why I think it's better shooting 10. Okay. So these things start acting up when uh, they're in the sun. Another reason not to shoot in the sun. These uh, GoPro uh, here, uh, GoPro cameras, especially that GoPro 8 I've got. <laughs> that thing is no use in the sun. But anyway, so this is a six shot for the Zans meter. Six. Seven. Not holding for wind, just shooting. Aiming exactly the same spot every time. So that one nine. Okay, last one for the Zans. Now that seems the wind is changing to the now it's blowing to the right, at least where I am. Now it's chopping and changing. Anyway, let's see. Okay, so. It was the Zans at 233 meters. They were at 25, they were impacting 0.4 mil higher than the than these RPT. So I'm gonna be aiming just a little bit lower. Same spot every time for these RBTs. Let's see. Let me get a good aiming spot.
Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Six shot with these RVTs. Down low. This one did go in a little bit, not as tight. Anyway, what was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now for the eighth. <clears throat> so these RBTs, 40 grain RBTs, out of a 16 twist barrel, 700 mil, was shooting 300 meters. At 200 meters, somebody was standing there about 100 yards to the right, of course, and you could hear that. Brrr, it was already turned around and that point was flapping in the wind. Now with this 14 inch twist barrel, they are grouping. Not bad, uh, taking consideration I'm not uh, dialing for wind. Not great groups at all, but I wasn't uh, compensating for wind at all. It was pendrift or nothing. So, this was the Zanslax 40 grain 0.217 flat base, 233 meter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 10 shots, flat base, flat base, and then the RBTs, seems like one, let's check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, yeah, I think I shot one extra, but anyways, so some go, some went in a little bit harder, Oh, not as hard as the others, but anyways, that for me is a big, a big issue. If, they, if you can get them all the same thickness, maybe it's a bearing surface length or something, I'm not sure, but look what you can get. If you can just get them going in the same... I think I'm only going to be shooting five maybe. Okay, this is Inferno again. And the uh, RBTs, 233 meter. Not compensating for wind or anything, as you will be able to see. <laughs> Flat base for the grain.
That's a spread of 2.4 mil. That's one, two, five. Let's shoot another one. I think this is six for the flat base. That's not bad. Um, let's have a look at this. 25 impacts and then the uh, 233 meter impacts. Okay. I think those were the yes RBTs at 25, not stable at all. Now you might think at 25, no, think there's no way to shoot at 300, but it's possible because they're just not stable. The further they get out, the more stable they will get. That's why you won't win a competition with 40 grains at these higher speeds. Okay, so I'm here at the 233 meter gong again. Okay, so this was the first flat base group, 233. RBT group, including those three, at 233. This is second RBT group. One, two, three, four, five. I think this was two shots because it was six shots. This was the second RBT group. This is the second flat base group. Now the flat base group, vertical spread, is winning the RBTs in the second group and in the third group. This is the flat base group. Winning by far the vertical spread but what's now interesting um, so I can clear I see my slugs kind of deep not always but I can clearly feel I do go into the um, the chamber I mean into the barrel so I want to feel how tight they go in so I can feel when the slug is going tighter than the others and mostly the difference is some are tighter than others, so it may be bearing surface length or whatever, I'm not sure, but anyways. And, but as, as I said, the, <coughs> the flat base are winning the vertical spread by far. Now look at the horizontal spread. Let's do this for kind of horizontal. This is first flat base horizontal spread. Okay, kind of. First. RBT horizontal spread. Okay, so it's clearly winning there, except for these that were out. I mean, if you take most of them, most of the shots and consider they're winning. The RBTs again, yeah. That one was from the first group. Second group, RBT uh, horizontal spread, winning by far. So if they can get these slugs, these guys, if they can get the slugs more precise, we'll have much better quality. And they can't say they are precise, because I can feel, because I push them into the barrel, I can feel when there's a difference. It might be bearing surface length, or it might be the thickness. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to even try to measure bearing surface length. It's, it's, it's no use. 
So I'm going to try to find uh, lathe tent slugs and see how they would perform. But yes, interesting. The flat bases won the vertical spread, much smaller vertical spread than the RBTs. But the RBTs <laughs> wins the uh, horizontal spread. Anyways, thought that would be interesting. I would have been at a much slower speed, something like 9.30 or something. But anyway, still. JSB Beast. It was 33 meters.